afternoon. Uh, I'd like to speak to you about the Scots language and Scottish English. Um, two slightly different things. Uh, the Scots language was the language of Scotland when it was an independent country. Um, it's uh, probably best known through the poetry of Robert Bunn, the Scottish national poet, um, who uh, was uh, very briefly um, active in the 18th century. Um, a lot of his poetry is in English. Um, some of it is in Scots, in Anglified versions of Scots. Um, Scots was the language of, the, of Scotland when it was an independent country. Um, the language officially used in the Scots Parliament when it existed until its abolition in 1707. Um, how many people here speak English, all of you? <laughs> is, this, is this okay as English? It's not my grandma tongue. Uh, most people in Scotland are totally unaware that most of you will find something wrong with that. Outward is not English. Outward is, is not used in other varieties of English. Um, normally, uh, in other varieties, you'd say outside, uh, outside of. Uh, the elevator. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I forgot to switch on the sound. Um, um, Thank you. 
He's with the same part of England as Dick Van Dyke. And so he's in Swedes. Please speak slowly and clearly. Smart house. <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you please repeat that? Eleven. If you don't understand a lingo, a way back came to your own country. <laughs> so you talk now, is it? A way back to your own country? Oh, don't start, Mr. Bleeding Heart. How can you be racist to a left? Please speak slowly and clearly. Eleven. 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 You're just saying it the same way. <laughs> you keep saying it to not understand Scottish. All right. Eleven. Scottish Gaelic. Here we see uh, a bilingual roadside with the um, names of the places in two languages. There are 
there is very little else uh, in the way of road signs in Scottish Gothic uh, in Scotland. So that's. Um, this map shows the current distribution of Scottish Gaelic speakers, and they are concentrated up in the, up in the northwest. The darker areas show uh, where there are more Scottish Gaelic speakers. It can be up to 80% of the population up in the Western Isles, but um, mostly uh, con confined to uh, the northwest. A couple of outliers down in the south, which show that at some point uh, Scottish Gaelic was more widely spread in Scotland. There's an example of Scottish Gaelic if you've never seen Scottish Gaelic before. Um, can you recognise what text it is? Article 1 of the Declaration. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, here's an example of a street, a bilingual street sign, uh, partly English uh, and a translation in um, uh, Scots. Can anybody tell me in which country you think this might be? No. Australia? No. No, it's in Northern Ireland, okay. um, as part of the uh, peace agreement in Ireland, um, there was, part of the agreement was that there would be money spent on uh, maintaining Scots, or Ulster Scots, the dialect of Scots, that is still spoken by about 10,000 people, mostly in rural areas. So Mott Road, formerly Lang Sign, long ago, the two need to turn Here's an example from uh, Scotland itself. Uh, it's a menu in Scots uh, from an Indian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, they've changed the menu now, so they've only got an uh, English language version of the current menu, uh, but they've given me the menu to translate into Scots, so it's, that restaurant will soon have a menu. Well. Okay. Okay. How, how intelligible is that to most people who are in Scotland? Um, Pretty much. Yeah, okay. yes. Can you read it for us? A can you mix the chickpeas, tatties, cucumber, coriander, and bananas, tap it with tangy sauce and spices? Daltarka, a stotero, a side dish, hail lentils, fresh cook it with garlic, onions, and spices. Surucci's <laughs> Suruchi, is chase the rice and breed. You'll get sindri types of rice in Indian cooking, but Saruchi uses the maize wheel thread and the gross basmati. Its name means the flavour of the That was great. <laughs> 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 Can you translate some of it? I don't know. Why? 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 Canny. Canny. Nice. Nice. Well, yes. Pleasant. Pleasant. Tatties. Potatoes. Uh, tap it, top it, we, with a tiny sauce and spices. Uh, a stota, uh, literally something that bounces, but <laughs> something good. Um, <laughs> dish. Hail, or, uh, and it's fresh cook it, with uh, ingots and onions and spices. You'll get sundry types of rice, sundry, sundry uh, in Indian cooking, but Suruchi's so Yezis uses the Mace Leo Kent, the most well known, and the Groes, the most beautiful, Basmati, its name means the fragrant one. Can I just ask which part of Scotland is this? 
is this from? Because like in Muslim, we don't say real Kent. I don't know whether that's from other regions. So which which area? Real Kent. Well, in general, that because I know areas can be a part of real Kent. Um. It's probably not very common in her case, but um, it's certainly traditional in Scotland. Yeah, but I think Glasgow's a bit different. But you use Ken for Nome, don't you? Ken for Nome, yes. Um, well, in a lot of places they'll say, do you Ken me? Do you Ken me? Do you know me? Yeah. But in Glasgow they don't really okay. say that. It's yeah. the end of the day they don't want to do this. It does vary. Yeah. Glasgow um, has got. It's a bit unique. <laughs> so that's, that's more, much more like the Scandinavian or even German, right? Like Kenna. Yeah. Yeah. Ken. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a map of the dialects of uh, Scots. Um, it's not much contrast, but um, basically there's a, there's a central dialect, but these U's on the map show the, the, the four main cities in Scotland, which have got their own um, dialects. Um, North East Scots is quite distinctive. Uh, it's uh, done a couple of sound changes that make things less recognisable, um, such as wh becoming f. Uh, so a greeting <coughs> in North Eastern Scots would be Fit like, fit being what, what like. Um, and the Shetland and Orkney Islands, um, again, uh, an even more extreme version of uh, northern Scots. Here's some statistics from the uh, census uh, of 2011. Uh, in Scotland, um, with uh, the various statistics for various capabilities in, in the Scots language, you'll see that 75% of the people in Scotland say they have no skills in Scots. Um, and a lot of those say that they don't write Scots. So, as Scots is, is becoming more and more marginal, but it is on a dialect continuum with standard Scottish English. Here's the historical situation from about 700 AD. Um, after the, the English came to England, um, they occupied this southeastern part of, of Scotland. And um, English was, or a variety of English was spoken in that area. Um, in the west of the country, the Goidelic Celtic, um, which today is represented by Scottish Gaelic, Irish and Manx, was spoken in the west. Then in the middle, Brythonic, which is close to modern day Welsh, um, and Pictish, which people used to think was something exotic, uh, which we only actually know from about 20 inscriptions. Uh, people now realise that it is uh, another uh, language related to, to Welsh, um, spoken in, in the north and the east. Then down in the southwest, a mixed area of uh, Goidelic Celtic and Brighton Celtic differing from village to village. So you'll find a mixture of Goidelic and Brythonic place names in, in that area. But eventually Anglian, Northum, Northumbrian English um, became more widespread throughout Scotland. Here's an example of Old Northumbrian, um, <laughs> which uh, relates to um, how uh, at the point of death uh, people become more thoughtful about um, whether uh, their uh, acts during their life will be deemed to be good or evil. 
Um, and I think, I think that one, Aether, is similar to a word that still exists in modern yeah. Icelandic. Which word? Aether. Um, that is not the original manuscript, but it's one that, it's the earliest copy of that manuscript that we have. If we look at a later manuscript uh, of the same thing, which was written perhaps elsewhere in England, we see yet yeah, there are differences in orthography, but we notice that there's a vowel change there. And this is quite an important vowel change in English, uh, which happened to English but didn't happen to uh, the dialect of English that became Scots. And here we can see how often in historical developments um, things occur systematically in a given environment. Um, so that the word for bone stayed bane in Scots, became bone in English. And a, a, a development also happened as German de descended from uh, Germanic, um, in that instead of bane, it became bane, and then bane, um, and changed its name, it changed its meaning as well. Uh, we also see that there are a couple of examples where the sound change is not exactly right. Um, we no longer say own for one in English. And we no longer say aim for one in Scots, we say again. Um, which also goes to show that another law in historical linguistics is Everyone has got its own history. A lot of the Scots um, pronunciations are very close to Scandinavian. Yes, AM. yes. yes. Um, on to the syntax. Uh, this is what Scottish English is like. Um, it's in blue. Standard English English is in black. So if you want to shorten, this needs to be done. In Scottish English, the only way of doing it is to say, this needs done. This is not acceptable in English English. Whereas the inverse, the shortening in English English becomes, this needs doing, which is not acceptable in Scottish English. You can't do it if you want to negate that. In Scottish English, you can say, you're not going to do that. As my grandmother often might say, you no can do it, you no. Know. Yes. She says, <laughs> yeah. 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 But in English, English, you have to say no can do it. And negating, I've heard, in, in Scottish English, you can say, I've not heard. In English, English, you're more likely to say, I haven't heard. In the sound. In the south, yeah, in, 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 in the say, north. Surely you say I've not heard as well. Not heard as well. Yeah. Yeah. One question, sorry. Um, would this, in the section of that example, would the English one be wrong in Scots, or are they just dispreferred? Um, in, in both of those, the, the English variety is acceptable exactly. and used, but. In the first one, it would be, and the first one is wrong. In the, 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 in, in the first one, uh, this needs done uh, is is what you would see. And is he's doing it is wrong? Would that be seen as wrong? Or? It, it is wrong in English English. This needs doing just as it said in Scottish English. Okay. And some more extreme examples of uh, Scots syntax. Um, <laughs> I'm um, not. I'm not. I'm no. I'm not. I'm a. I'm a no. 
know my name. I am not. He said that man, it's not my name. <laughs> um, this is uh, regarded as um, very important to us speak. But, um, What's the difference between Amna and Arna? Um, it's, it's, a sort, it's a sort of emphatic form. Okay. Um, you, you can use it after that. <coughs> so you might regard it as a sort of subjunctive, if you like, but it's only used in that. Um, it's, it's, it's emphasis. Um, if you wanted to say, am I not in standard English, in English, English, aren't I? Is quite the usual. But aren't I is impossible. Irregular plurals. Uh, Scots has conserved a few irregular plurals. Kai instead of. It, it's more and more becoming coups. But um, when I was younger, we would have said Twai Kai. Well, actually, in the region that I come from, we would have said Twai Kai. Nowadays, it would be pretty much Twai and uh, e, in, she, shen, um, again, they're becoming marginalized. <laughs> Some examples of um, how grammar in Scots is slightly different from um, uh, English, English. Use of the article um, and um, plurals and plurals. We need to hear you say are, all of these. Of course. <laughs> are you no way to the skull? Have you not gone to school yet? You're right, crab it again in the day. You're becoming extremely irritable today. <laughs> <laughs> All men deeds and bear the sin forgets. Old men die and children soon forget. The tune's eight miles for here. The town is eight miles from here. Um, a similar thing happens in Irish English because the plural of euro used in the name is euro, five euro. Whereas if the euro ever comes to England, Getting in that second one, the construction belongs with Kravitz. Yes, that's right. It's, 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 uh, it's transposed. Yeah. Yes. Some Scots words. Ashet is a big plate. Borrowing from French. Ashet? Ashet. Ash Ash a big plate, yeah. as in French. Uh, from French, I see. Bairn is child. Um, in some parts of Scotland, you, you'd say Wayne. Um, it's borrowing from Scandinavia. Candy is one of the words for drain. Um, it tends to be used in eastern parts of Scotland, other than Edinburgh. In Glasgow and Edinburgh, you would call it a cider. In some other parts of West None, none of these words exist. Drich is um, a term used, I suppose, quite a lot in, in discussing the weather in Scotland. It means very overcast. <laughs> and I, I, I've actually had um, an English weather forecast that used to be uh, very recently. So it's, it's, it's spreading. <laughs> Scotland has its own legal system, so um, technical te technical legal terms um, in Scots uh, exist that 
uh, barely exist in English. Easement means um, accommodation, house, flat. <coughs> Forgather, not used in English, but it is used for We might be only to what for gathering. Click it is a useful descriptive word. It means um, stupid or stupid looking. Hawk <laughs> <laughs> Magandhi is uh, a word which means hanky panky, <laughs> illicit sexuality. Um, Engel is a uh, fireplace. Uh, it's a borrowing from Scottish Canada. Jings is an exclamation. Ken is a top. Loch is a lake. Macha is a low lying coastal land. Another borrowing from Canada. Uh, Ned is um, a hooligan or a ne'er do well. Um, my son uh, endearingly refers to me as Ned, um, <laughs> knowing, full, knowing full well that there is a, a different meaning there. Um, Oxter is armpit. Hochel is pilfered. Quine is a borrowing from Scandinavian again. It means good. Rowan is what we say for brain pipes. Scunner is um, something irritating or a nuisance. Thrawn is somebody bad tempered. Uncle is more a poetic word, um, means day. Venal is uh, borrowing, another borrowing from French, means an alley. Wabbit means tired. And Uke. Is, sorry. Someone just didn't hear. Tired, right? Tired. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Exhausted. Uh, you. Um, sorry. I was having trouble with that. Does it probably mean you like exclamation or something? No, it, it means itch. All right. <laughs> as, as as it as it uh, does. <laughs> now. Um, Mostly nowadays, um, Scots is, is spelt as a modified form of English. When Scotland was an independent country, it had its own standard orthography, so hoose would have been spelt like that. And since then, some people have tried to come up with uh, reformed orthographies for Scots, but they didn't have really good time. Right, let's remind ourselves about vowels in English, English. Um, how many speakers of English, English do we have in the room? From England? Which is it? Australia? Probably, um, it's not exactly those vowels that um, you use, but um, it is a hell of a lot of vowels. How many non-native speakers of English in the country? Did you find the vowels easy? Yeah. Um, yeah? It depends a lot more than other times. Yes. So, some of these vowels are quite unusual. Um, but uh, certainly, I have tried to imitate Southern English accents and after listening to Southern English on the TV in Salem for all my life, I, I just can't do it on my head. Um, so uh, I, I uh, take my hat off to, to those of you who've managed to master it. Um, so if you take um, a couple of words, then this is how the Oxford English Dictionary translates them. Um, this is perhaps how uh, a narrow transcription of some London pronunciations might go. 
the, it, it is, uh, I find it quite difficult to make an authentic difference between the two. Um, <laughs> Well, because um, in uh, some dialects of London English, the L is not pronounced. It's pronounced. Wait, can someone, for the American English speaker in the room, can someone please pronounce both of those for me? <laughs> um, someone ho, pronounce the first ho, one. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull you into the pole. Okay. <laughs> can you not hear the difference? I can. You can. I just didn't know how to produce it. This is more interesting than the final consonant than the vowel sound, actually. Yes. It's different in shouts as well, like poo and ho. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yes. Because very few people speak like the Oxford English dictionary. So, it, it's difficult. In Scottish English, it's easy. Both words are exactly the same. Pool, pool. <laughs> However, if you get to Scots, um, there are differences because um, you, pool is always pronounced pool, but pool uh, could be pronounced pool. In the southwest, it would be pronounced poo, providing the female, and in parts of eastern Scotland, you would say pole. Right, Scottish English vowels. An awful lot less of them than they are in English English. So, if you want to get these right, it's much easier. Price, fleece, face, boat, goose, foot, square, choice, thought, mouth, cure, kit. Dress, trap, bath, and start, lot, cloth, and strut. Much easier. Yeah. And some of these vowels are pretty much easier. So, however, there is a complication. Aitken's Law on the Scottish Vowel Lane Rule, which is not the same as the voicing effect, which is a similar but different rule, which applies to American English and Southern accents of English English. So, some or most vowels are long in open syllables before voiced fricatives, before R, and before morphine in Scots. So, um, we have breed, short, but breathe, long. Whereas, I suppose, if somebody pronounced breed in a Southern English accent, it would be long. You got a Southern English speaker? Yeah, breed. Breed. So, that, that's, that's long. And breed, breed and breathe. Yes, yes. about. I mean, it varies from depending which vowel it is exactly. This is just a tendency that it's long. Um, but it also means that it is, unless you remember that, it's difficult to uh, authentically do a Scottish accent. So. If you want to say on heed, 
that's wrong, that's not, that's not authentic, because you would lengthen the bill before the voice stop. Although the rule starts to break down the further north you get, the northern dialects of Scots, we start to lose that, that um, bill length rule as well. We've also got some consonants that um, have been lost in English English. Um, we've got the k in loch and b, um, and we still pronounce which, although this is starting to be lost in the Glasgow So, we make, we make a difference between which and which, and when and when. Which, used to happen in um, English English until 40 or 50 years ago it started being lost there. Can so, so, sorry? I'm sorry, go ahead. Quich. Do you say them the same? No, no, no. no, no. I, I, I no. Which and which. What do you say? Which and which. Oh, you do? Like a small. You do, okay. Like, uh, Quich. Where? H-W instead of W-H. Funny. I mean, some Americans do that, but it's rare. Texas. Texas. Queen says, Queen. 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 Queen when she was young, that she had to pronounce quer because it was lazy not to. But um, 50 years later, um, I asked my mother-in-law about that, and she maintains that she never pronounced quer. Um, she always pronounced quer um, for once that we get with double age. A lot of people from London, uh, yes. because, because companies tend to drop the age yeah. at the beginning of words, Harry went to Amsterdam, Harry lost his hat. Um, they, they're overcompensating um, yes. because they've been told so often that they have to pronounce your age yes. and they start putting it in places where they shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> the way we work. So this is like a bias from what I hate having. Right, quite a bit. Sorry? Some examples uh, of Scots language texts. Uh, this is from Glue by Evan Welsh, probably more famous for his trade sporting novel. Um, um, uh, this is English, Scottish English. Um, confusion between which word to use. Here we're using the English word, here we're using the Scots word. Mary, Mary. <laughs> it was it was when it was when it was one of the one of the best times when I'm kneeling on the flare and I had to be on one of the big chairs so as nobody could bother me and I've got a chocolate biscuit and a glass of milk on the wee stool and my mass and my dad's sitting on the other chair reading his paper and my mass making the tea and my ma, she's the best cook in the world because she can make the best chips and my dad's the best dad in the world because he could batter anything. <laughs> um, he was once going to batter Paul McCartney because my ma likes him and he was going to marry ma but dad married her first and if he had me, if he had me uh, I'd have been in the <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is a poem by Burns. Um, note the apologetic apostrophes, um, because this was not long after the uh, Treaty of Union between Scotland and England. And um, speaking Scots was uh, not um, the way to get ahead in the world. 
Um, so it is subconsciously perhaps looked upon as a substandard form of things. And here we've got a rhyme, uh, Pinch, Threat, or Theorem, and really it should be Theorem. This is not Theorem, this is Theorem. Otherwise, it would. Does everybody know what Haggis is? Yes. It's that. Yes, it's, it's, um, it's a bit of the inside of a sheep. It's very nice. But I prefer the vegetarian version. Fair fire on the sunsy face, great chieftain of the pumpkin race. About the man you took the place, pinch, tripe, or theorem. Will there be one day or grace as long as the end? So it's a um, fair, um, beautiful. That's a piece of modern Scots poetry. Kai Kuri and their star, life smoking for the news. I leave the sunlight furrows the work that good news and splatters breathes we can. Have you ever tried this? <laughs> 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 With Kai, we know already, cows. Kuri, uh, crouched down in their stall, life smoking from their mouths. A gleam of sunlight uh, is joined to the darkness like good news and splatters breaths with gold. So clearly it's a power. Yes. Um, and our last text. This is Shetland dialect. Ains to our alas at the card shelty prake. A spader and midder was bathed deep and she bedeth in a place called Baka Boot. In the land of Knapp, the two buckled truckers, the sisters are battered her and made her life a misery. Now the sisters, he was called Dewil, and the other persevered, was prone condemned to gain to the foy at Uppity Hawk. And Shelty Prattle was running about hinting clays and under clays, and hats and shin and styes and hat creams, for Dewil and persevered, and that muckled phrase at the they muck up their mind, went to bed on, and the mayor declared and laid all of them the war made up to God. So, a bit more extreme, a bit more conservative, and um, the z sound has become to. Is there a main publishing house for Scots, or how, how is this step appearing? Um, there are a number of uh, little um, magazines that, that come out. Um, there's also uh, ah. some links there. Um, you can get books and CDs to teach yourself how to speak Scots. Um, the Scots Language Society publishes a magazine and um, people um, send in poetry. There's also something called the Scots Corpus. The Scots? The uh, Scots Corpus. Scots Corpus. All on the internet. Is this a separate society for Shetland? Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to ask about learning materials, so it seems that awesome. Um, I was going to ask, uh, do you think, if there's, a fo if there's someone who doesn't speak Scots learning Scots, how would a Scots speaker take it in socially? I mean, would they think that they're uh, that this is, uh, what would they think about? Would they think that it, this is like, like learning a foreign language, or would they think they're sort of uh, making fun of them or something? Or Because this is sometimes a problem it's, with learning. Yes, uh, there, 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 there is a problem. It depends uh, who you happen to be talking to. Um, lots of people are uh, in favour of Scots and um, uh, understand other people wanting to. To learn it as, um, as of cultural interest, 
um, other people don't understand those sort of things. The situation of Scots is different from that of Gaelic uh, in that it's not official. There are no Scots medium schools. Um, and although things have moved on from the time I was at school where speaking Scots, especially to the teacher, um, was uh, frowned upon, um, now um, children get education about Scots as part of the uh, curriculum for English. Yeah. Should there be more recognition uh, also with the upcoming uh, sovereignty of Scotland? The thing is that uh, the current government has been in power in Scotland for seven years already um, and not a lot has changed. Um, and Actually, the, the governments from 1999 to 2007 were um, quite sympathetic to, to Scots as well. But um, I think the first priority was to make sure that the situation for Gaelic was maintained. So um, a lot has been done for that. And, now that the situation of garlic is more secure, then perhaps we can move on to Scotland. Anything else? Any other? How will the, how will the uh, referendum affect any of this? Um, probably not a lot. Um, I think um, after Scotland is independent, then things may move on for Scots. Um, if there's a no vote, um, the constitutional question will not be raised, so, uh, in the sense, it will be much different as it's now in 20 years. Okay. Thank you.